The cabinet has been reduced from 31 to 26, and women comprise 50% of its members. Almenshi Rene is a political commentator, and of course, he joins us now to analyze these major changes. Thank you so much for joining us, Almenshi. Notable in the new cabinet, as we just said, is that it is 15% leaner, and that means 26 dockets down from 31. I want to hear your analysis on what you think the, the, this cut is going to be as far as importance is concerned. Well, as uh, first of all, it's a, it's a good thing to see. That that's one of the most notable things that, that, that have happened. It has been reduced. Mm -hmm. um, it is uh, of the advice of many people that smaller government can be more effective. Uh, we, we have in Africa examples of, of, of governments that are, have 80 ministries, yeah. and, 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 and for sure that increases the, ra the red tape, the, the bureau bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. So definitely a smaller, more effective government, more pointed, mm -hmm. uh, which seems to be what we are seeing here, right. would be will be very helpful. Right. So meaning forward. less expenditures as far as dockets are concerned. Less expenditures and also less passing the buck because from time to time you have many different ministries that may have the same kinds of mm. attributions mm. or may have some confusing ones. There may be some blurred lines. Right. So there being streamlined would definitely be better. Right. Perfect. Of course, another issue that is uh, notable here, gender-wise, it has 58% women full ministers, while the full cabinet plus ministers of state is actually 50% yeah. women. But on the flip side, you have often not been a fan of uh, these kind of gender-based statistical uh, breakdowns. Why? I wouldn't say that I'm not a fan of it. I don't necessarily like to go by it. I understand the logic of it. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when, uh, when, when we have uh, to somehow change the mindsets of yeah. people and make people understand that government uh, leadership being by women or by men mm -hmm. or being uh, integrated the way it is uh, now uh, is possible. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, when we focus too much on that, when we focus too much on those numbers, mm -hmm. yes, they look good on paper, but what does it translate into in yeah. actual terms? So for me, uh, uh, it's not so much about appointing women 50%, but appointing able and willing to, to go the extra mile women. Right. Whether they're men or women, they, they have to be uh, oh, people they, who they, can they do they have to, Yeah, they have to come to work and, 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 and put in the extra work. Right, so put in the extra work. I like that. But also, Dr. Ambassador Richard Sezevera, of course, is now Rwanda's new foreign affairs minister, yes. taking over from Louise Mushichiwawa. These are big shoes that he takes to fill. Do you think this comes as a surprise? Because we had other uh, contenders who were actually eyeing for this particular position. Do you think this comes as a surprise for you? It, it doesn't come too much as a surprise. Mm -hmm. I think that in the pool of diplomats that we have, because that's the kind of person we would be looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a few names that were being thrown around. Uh, or some people were thinking of, for example, the, uh, the current Minister of State uh, in charge uh, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, Olivier Nduhungirehe. Yes. Uh, that was a possible one. Uh, uh, Richard Sezibera has been in government for a long time. He has been ambassador to the U.S., uh, ambassador of Rwanda to the U.S. Yeah. He has been the, uh, the, the Secretary General of the EAC. So he's a man who understands the inner workings of uh, Rwanda's politics, but also the, uh, the, the, the diplomacy of Rwanda. So I am very sure that he will be very, very capable in that uh, very position. Very capable. And this. And of course, we understand yeah. that. That many Ministry has now also been uh, sort of split uh, with uh, Ambassador Olivier being given uh, the docket of ESC on yes. its own. I mean, your, your thoughts on this? It, well, he was already he ha already had that in his attributes. So he's uh, he also is someone who has worked not at the. Uh, Rwandan embassy in the U.S., but at the U.N., yeah. so he has also a portfolio of, uh, of uh, diplomacy that is uh, that is wide in experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm very sure that in terms of uh, now focusing, uh, putting his focus on the EAC while uh, Ambassador Sezibera can focus on the wider range of foreign affairs, uh, th that should work. That should work. Another notable uh, change was Inspector General of Police, Emmanuel Gassana, has actually been moved from that particular position, yes. and he now becomes the governor of the southern province. Yes. I mean, let, let me read your thoughts on this. So so that one, there the can be speculations. I'm yeah. not very good on speculations and rumors, but they had, uh, so the Rwandan police, for uh, first of all, yeah. in a general sense, is, uh, is widely commended, not just in Rwanda, but also in the region uh, and, and in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, now in internal affairs, yeah. uh, the, the name uh, Emmanuel Gastana has been coming up, and some people had been complaining about his style of leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the basis on that? I couldn't tell you. Mm -hmm. But uh, clearly, if he's appointed,
pointed to another to, to another position, it shows that he still has the, still clean. the, the confidence right. of, of the appointing authority. Right. Uh, and uh, who the person who's replacing him was actually uh, his deputy in charge of operations. Yep. So Dan Munuzai is his name. Right. So, so I think uh, there we would be going into the realms of speculation, but right. surely, uh, so why not? Some new blood, uh, though he's not really new blood, mm -hmm. but at least a new direction a or new position. a position. Right. Yeah. Another one which is very important also to look at is uh, Soraya Hakuzi, uh, Hakuzia Rimi, Hakuzia yes, Rimi, Hakuzia Rimi. Yeah, who's actually taking over as the new Minister of Trade and Industry. What do you think awaits this lady as the new trade and industry minister for Rwanda? I think uh, Rwanda has a, a number of things that, uh, that we're trying to accomplish. Uh, one, of course, there's, there's this campaign of Made in Rwanda of, what, uh, of trying to boost the economy but through the industry, the local industry, yeah. but also trying to increase its exports as, as it can be understandable to, to uh, kind of bring a balance between what we do import, which is currently to a much more way higher than what we do export in, in external markets. Right. So, so she has, her, the trade she has her, definitely her, her, her work cut out for her. Right. right. Yeah. Finally, uh, the uh, change as far as the long-serving Minister of Defense is concerned, mm -hmm. uh, who now takes over uh, as uh, at the office of the President as Senior Defense and Security Advisor. This is uh, General uh, Kavarewe? Uh, James Kavarewe. Yes. Uh, let's talk a bit about that. Uh, that, that one also came as a surprise for mm -hmm. people. He, uh, he has been, uh, he's known to be a, a long time collaborator uh, of, uh, of President Kagame, going way back since, since the days of the struggle. Yeah. And he has always been around now. Uh, again, he's not being tossed out because now he's coming actually closer to the president. Mm -hmm. uh, one could even uh, try to, uh, uh, to venture a thought and think that maybe if he gets him close as a special uh, a senior advisor on security and, and on defense matters, mm -hmm. uh, we know that it has been said for, for quite some time now that there's possible uh, groups of trying to make incursions or may have made incursions into Rwanda. Mm -hmm. So there are some security concerns that right. I, would be, I would believe that his kind of expertise as having been a soldier himself, as having been on the field, having fought in the Congo, in Uganda, that he would be a person able to, to best advise the president. Mm. So generally, you think this is a winning team? It, uh, uh, well, it remains to be seen. It is definitely, well, I love the mindsets. Uh, I love the youthfulness that it brings. Uh, I love the, the, uh, the idea of, of the gender dynamics. Mm. Uh, I prefer the, the word dynamics than balance. Balance seems like something that, uh, okay, it's a, it's, it sounds like a balancing act. That, right. that, that, but the dynamics, I love it. Uh, so we'll see. It, rem it remains to be seen. But what we do know is that the appointing authority uh, is actually a person who's very much focused on results. Right. So focused on results. They so they have be. their work really, really cut cut. Absolutely. Thank you so much.